age, over 300 years. Trunk circumference, 10 meters. Height, over 50 meters. It supports innumerable plants. Offers nectar in abundance and feeds over 60 animal species with its fruit. From its base to the very top, this tree is home to over a thousand different living organisms. Almendro, the tree of life. In the endless green of the rainforest, a dazzle of color, the distinctive crown of the almendro. And here in the upper canopy, the powerful, unmistakable cry of the great green macaw. These two beauties of the tropics, the almendro tree and the great green macaw, live together in close harmony. And the story of their intimate relationship has even inspired a song. Though celebrated in song, reality tells a different story. Together, the almendro and the green macaw face an uncertain future, for their shared home is the rapidly dwindling rainforest that stretches along Central America's Atlantic coast from Honduras to Colombia. There is hope. In Costa Rica, right at the center of the narrow land bridge that connects South America with the north. The name Costa Rica, the rich coast, is well deserved. It is home to an incredible number of species, one of the most intense concentrations of biodiversity on Earth. In the Zona Norte, on the Nicaraguan border, lies the heartland of the almendros habitat. Giants of the forest, the upper branches of the almendros, rise above the canopy and form green islands at dizzying heights. Though the surrounding forest teems with life, a single almendro is itself a microcosm of nature. It offers a galaxy of habitats. Each level opens onto a new world. And each world attracts different species. Animals colonize every part, the trunk, the branches and the leaves. And even each bromeliad has its own inhabitants.
But once a year, the Almendro offers an additional attraction, a generous feast of the fruit that gives the tree its name, almendros, the Spanish word for almonds. And the first guests at the feast are the great green macaws. The macaws, or lapas verdes, as they are known in Costa Rica, arrive early, before the almond fruits are fully ripe, and are able to gorge themselves without competition from other animals. Uninterested in the outer pulp, the macaw uses its strong beak to break through the tough inner husk and get to its favorite delicacy, almond kernel. Even so, the lapas verdes are choosy eaters. Of all the fruit they pick, only a third is consumed. The rejects fall to the forest floor to become food for the ground dwellers. The sound of almendros hitting the ground alerts the agoutis. They recognize the noise from some distance and immediately home in. These rodents, relatives of guinea pigs, also favor the kernel, but are more careful with their leftovers. Any surplus fruits are individually buried away for future consumption, but the agoutis will only recover a fraction of their cash. The rest will grow, increasing the distribution of almendro trees. The forest floor, alive with thousands of buzzing mosquitoes, is humid and dark. And it can be a place of danger. The broad trunk of the almendro tree offers sanctuary for some. Many species of tropical frogs seek out places where their tadpoles will be safe from predatory fish. This green and black poison dart frog has found a natural rainwater basin. The frog lays its eggs on the forest floor and then transports the tadpoles to the safety of the water as soon as they hatch. The frog's private pool is next to a nest of stingless bees. A colony may be populated by up to 10,000 individuals. The bees play a vital role in the pollination of forest plants, some of which are familiar to us as popular evergreen house plants, such as this philodendron. But here, its shoots serve a more practical purpose, as useful climbing aids. Some animal residents of the middle forest level also look rather familiar. But unlike its cousin, the grey squirrel, this red-tailed squirrel shares its domain with some very unfamiliar neighbours. Howler monkeys, green vine snakes, and spider monkeys. The almendro offers privacy only in its upper level, high above most other trees. Where a branch breaks off, a hole is left behind, creating a convenient, spacious nursery. Most macaw couples are regulars. They pair up for life, returning year after year to breed at the same nest hole. The newly hatched chicks must be fed every two hours, and it'll take about 90 days before they develop the splendid plumage of their parents 
and are ready for their first flight. Until then, the almendro nest holes, some up to a meter in depth, provide the vulnerable chicks with shelter from the wind and weather. Even in the tropics, protection from the elements is essential. There are two main seasons in northeastern Costa Rica, the very rainy wet season and the so-called dry season, when the rain occasionally pauses. Leaves and bromeliads capture most of the deluge. Only a relatively small amount reaches the forest floor. The almendro's leaf has the distinguishing characteristic of an off-center main rib, and the leaf stem functions in the same way as a drain pipe. Between November and March, the fruits are ripe. The almendro's germination rate is outstanding. Around 70% will sprout. But over the past two decades, the north has been subjected to the highest deforestation rate in Costa Rica, and the almendro has suffered. Its wood is extremely hard and resistant to termites, which makes it a popular building material. Legal and illegal cutting of trees has reduced the forest in this region to 30% of its original size. The pace of deforestation is reflected in the alarmingly rapid disappearance of the green macaw. These distinctive birds were once a common sight throughout the northern zone, but now their distribution has been reduced by 90%. Yet a striking number of almendros still remain. Now stranded on open grassland, these solitary giants survived the first wave of felling because the old saws were no match for their hard wood. And, surprisingly, these isolated trees are now popular hatcheries for the macaws. It may be that the continuing destruction of the forest has forced the macaws to set up home here. But few of their natural predators can approach the nests across a wide open field. So, perhaps, the macaws nest here because the young birds are safer. There is only one enemy here. Thieves are contributing heavily to the decimation of the Macor population. A chick is worth well over 2,000 US dollars on the black market. Ulysses Alaman is no nest robber. He belongs to an organization founded by American conservationist George Powell, an organization that is dedicated to saving the La Paz Verdes. Together with Giselle Monge of Costa Rica and Swiss native Olivier Chasseau, he works for the Great Green Macaw Research and Conservation Project. In the beginning, they spent most of their time on educational work. 
These days, every Costa Rican knows about the green macaws and the importance of almendro trees, but it is not enough. Ulises and his team have now set their sights on a greater goal. They're campaigning for the region to be declared a national park, Parque Nacional Macenque. The San Juan River marks the border with Nicaragua. Beyond the riverbank is a huge wildlife sanctuary. But on the Costa Rican side, only a ragged patchwork of forest and grassland remains. The planned Makenke National Park will safeguard the remnants of the forest and, in time, perhaps allow them to fully flourish once more. It's a worthwhile enterprise, for even the small patches of rainforest that remain along the San Juan's tributaries are invaluable gems of biodiversity. Conditions are perfect for sustaining life. Rainfall and sunshine alternate several times in the course of a single day. During the macaws breeding season, Ulysses is always on duty. Even so, there's time to enjoy the evening spectacle at the La Paz Verde's roosting spot. The young, non-breeding pairs and adolescent birds gather and playfully squabble in the palm trees, their favorite nighttime accommodation. Even the toucan has to give way. Although macaws are extremely sociable, they prefer a certain amount of privacy at night. A bird will only allow its partner to sleep in the same palm tree. Birds who have the luxury of an almendro nest hole spend the night there, watching over their youngsters. The spectacle of the sunset lasts only a few minutes in the tropics. Almost seamlessly, sun is replaced by moon. Some nocturnal animals are so shy that they can only be observed with an infrared camera. In total darkness, a paka, close relative of the agouti, emerges from the undergrowth. They love almendros too. Unable to grip with their front paws, they must search for fruit that is already broken apart. The scent of the ripe fruit has attracted a spiny rat. But at such a popular feeding spot, other, more deadly visitors soon arrive. Thanks to the almendro, the now rare Mage is also having a successful night.
The liveliest time of day in the forest is dawn. Early risers begin to stir, whilst the night shift settles down to sleep. The nocturnal Olingo has spent most of the night feeding. Whilst on a neighboring tree, mosquitoes see to it that a koati gets an early wake-up call. Before sleeping, the Olingo quenches its thirst by licking dew from the moss. Like so many other residents of the rainforest, Olingos are in danger of extinction. They've not been able to adapt to the changes humans have made to their environment. The Coatis, on the other hand, have thrived. They seek food in human settlements, and some make better beggars than the average dog. As the dawn chorus reaches a crescendo, the morning light restores color to the land. And in the almendro tree, another busy day has already begun. A pair of crimson-fronted parakeets are setting up home next door to the macaws. All parrot species are sociable and fond of play and experimentation. The hard-working macaw parents have survived the worst. Now their offspring must be fed only three times a day. The young bird's transformation is remarkable. Even the macaw's most distinguishing feature, the red forehead, is already fully developed. It seems this year's brood of Lapas Verdes will soon be ready to fly. It's mid-May and Ulysses and his colleagues arrive. It's time to set up the operation. What the conservation team need to protect the macaws is information, and there's only one way to get it. As soon as the parents have left the nest, Ulysses uses a slingshot to propel a thin line over a branch, 40 meters above the ground. Alfredo then attaches a rope that Ulysses will use to climb up to the nest. An audience watches from a nearby tree. All that counts now is muscle power and experience, and a head for heights. The young birds screech for their lives. While Ulysses sets up the net, the others arrange palms to camouflage the team. With the net in place, all the team can do now is to wait for the parents to return. 
but Ulysses has picked a good time. On exposed land, the macaws are mainly active at particular times of the day. It's a different story in the rainforest. The forest creates its own microclimate. During the night, when the air temperature above the forest drops, the moisture condenses, enveloping the land below in a dense blanket of fog. As soon as sunlight warms the air, the fog evaporates and will later recondense and fall as rain. But the open grassland is totally exposed to the glaring tropical sunlight, so here the macaws are restricted to searching for food in the relative cool of the early morning and now in the hours before dusk. The parents should be returning at any minute. The trap is sprung and Ulysses ascends to collect the macaws for examination, but not without a struggle. At 40 meters above the ground, Ulysses must hold on tight to his precious cargo. The sex of a macaw cannot be determined with the naked eye, only by a blood test. The adult is fitted with a radio transmitter. Not even a macaw is able to remove this custom-made neckband. The transmitter will operate for about 20 months and then fall off. If the young birds survive into adulthood, they too may one day be fitted with a radio transmitter. But for now, a leg band will suffice. Every scrap of information obtained will be used to protect and conserve the macaws and their unique environment, the planned Makenke National Park. The birds are returned to the nest unharmed, but still protesting. A youngster nips Ulysses on the finger. He will feel the bite for several days. And when ruffled feathers have been smoothed and calm is restored to the nest, the other parent returns. This year, the conservation team has counted 23 active nests, three more than last year. The breeding season is coming to an end, and the last of the almendro fruits are now ready. Because of the sweet, intoxicating scent of the ripe fruit, the almendro tree is now more popular than ever. While most eat only the juicy pulp, the tough-beaked macaws always prefer the stone. A spider monkey sniffs out the best fruit. It takes a taste. If the fruit isn't quite up to scratch, it's immediately spat out. But it's not only mammals who eat almendro. 
fish enjoy them too. Cichlids and machacas devour these morsels from the heavens. The larger fish simply swallow them whole, while the smaller ones nibble off the soft pulp. But only some of the fruit from a riverbank almendro tree will go to the fish. The rest falls on the open grassland. Unusually for a forest tree, almendros germinate even on open ground, but the young plants rarely survive. Anything that is not eaten is trampled. The paralyzing heat of the midday sun beats down on the land. In the forest, the temperature is constant, but there are other problems to contend with. Many rainforest dwellers use camouflage and deception to survive. Some animals adapt their appearance to merge with the vegetation, and plants may masquerade as dangerous creatures. Some strange objects only reveal their true identities at the moment of transformation. The cocoon has done its job and releases one of the world's most beautiful butterflies. With what seem to be huge eyes on its folded wings, the morpho butterfly scares off its enemies or opens its wings to perplex them with a confusion of shimmering color. The Morpho is one of the last guests at the Almendro feast. Unlike most butterflies, Morphos do not seek out nectar, but feed exclusively on the fermenting fallen fruit. The young macaws are still at home, unable to leave the nest as heavy rainfall and strong winds have delayed their first flight. This is one of the last pre-digested meals of almendro kernels that the young will receive at the nest. It'll take at least two years of parental training before they're fully independent. But soon they will start finding food for themselves. If the rain ever stops. On a nearby bromeliad, a grasshopper tries to escape the downpour. But the shelter is already taken by a rusty wandering spider. 
Hundreds of thousands of hair-like sensors cover its body and are highly sensitive to changes in air currents, even in a rainstorm. The victim is dispatched with a poisonous bite and sucked dry. As soon as the rain stops, the macaws emerge to drink at their freshly filled bromeliad. But this is one of the last times the family will be together at the Almendro this year. The young Lapas Verdes are ready to fly. Though some may need more than a little encouragement. Parents urge their offspring to take to the air. And demonstrate how it's done. But after all, a bird's got to fly. Soon, all the macaws will leave the Almendro region. In San Carlos, todos te queremos. También viajas a Sarapiqui. They will migrate to the highlands or Nicaragua for the next six months, where other trees and other fruits await. Regresas aquí, tapas verdes como las queremos. After the macaws have left, the almendros burst into flower. A profusion of blossoms in radiant pink attract nectar lovers long into August. The blooms open in the early morning, which is when the nectar is at its most plentiful. A fact that is greatly appreciated by the crowned woody nymph. This highly specialized hummingbird is among the almendros most important pollinators. Like the hummingbird, the leafcutter ant is also unique to the new world. It is not a pollinator, but helps the overall fertility of the forest in another way. In just a few days, a colony can strip an entire tree and return the biomass to the ground. The ants do not care whether they take the leaves or the flowers. What's important is their foodstuff, the microscopic fungus that grows on the vegetation. In human terms, this would be like someone breaking the world record for the 100-meter sprint whilst carrying a 300-kilogram weight. The little passengers are anything but lazy. They are bodyguards assigned to protect the workers.
by October conditions are increasingly damp and the higher humidity means that reptiles become more active. Eyelash palm pit vipers can be born in any one of six colors. The yellow variant is particular to Costa Rica. They prefer to live in banana trees. But even the most feared snakes are sometimes just thirsty. The highly venomous Fer de Lance poses no danger today either. This female is retiring to a quiet place to give birth. A single Fer de Lance can give birth to around 50 young. But immediately after birth, the tiny vipers begin leading independent lives. It's also the breeding season for amphibians. The reproductive cycle of the strawberry poison dart frog is one of the most fascinating in the rainforest. As soon as the tadpoles hatch, the female strawberry poison dart frog carries them away, one at a time, in search of safety, often high above ground. On reaching the bromeliad, she finds a suitable pool and deposits her young, a journey she may need to make up to 15 times. These high-altitude biotopes provide a home for many, from insect larvae to mosquitoes and frogs. Her tadpoles may be safe, but the frog is not. A male, rusty, wandering spider is lying in wait. Quick as lightning, the frog drops and plays dead. After a few minutes, it attempts another ascent. This time, the frog escapes. The driest season of the year is beginning. 
Costa Ricans say that when the spider webs sparkle in the morning light, summer will soon come. Even as the last almendro blossoms fade, the first heralds of summer begin building their nests. The male Montezuma oropendula invites a female to mate. The females build the nests. They begin with the entrance to what will be an ingenious structure and then continue with the walls, weaving them from the inside, blade by blade, until the tube-shaped nests are at least a meter in length. The birds prefer to build their suspended homes in isolated treetops, for which an almendro is often perfect. Whilst the Montezuma oropendula festoons the upper branches with its nests, other inhabitants have occupied the ground floor. The hollow trunk is a daytime hideaway for white-lined sack-winged bats. The male bat is kept quite busy during the day. His tasks include defending his territory and watching over his harem of up to eight females. To keep his many mates captivated, the male collects urine, gland secretions and saliva in his wing sacs to create his own intense perfume. In the evening, the sack-winged bats head out in search of food, whilst the short-tailed fruit bats arrive at the almendro. The bats will carry the almendro fruit a considerable distance before settling down to eat, so they too play an important role in the life cycle of the almendro tree. This year, thanks to the efforts of the conservation team, there is reason to celebrate. Crucial steps have been taken towards setting up Makenke National Park. And as from the start of the year, the cutting down of all almendros was strictly prohibited. And it's been an excellent year for the green macaws. Most of the young birds have somehow managed to survive their first year and are now returning to the almendros. They will return to the almendro trees, where they will fall in love, reproduce, and go on to raise another generation of Costa Rican La Paz Verdes. Meanwhile, the macaws are not alone in appreciating this bountiful tree. Every year, the conservation team puts on its own almendro feast. The future still holds uncertainty, but for now, the team can celebrate their successes. Ulysses undertakes the role of the parent and splits open the seeds. And just as the macaws, 
we too enjoy the almonds of the abundant almendro, the tree of life. Thank you. 